Good morning. I'm Muriel Bowser. I'm the mayor of the District of Columbia, and I'm joined by Admiral Dixon Smith, Chief of Police Kathy Lanier, uh, and we are here to give you a report on this morning's incident at the Washington Navy Yard. Elbow, elbow. We want to report that uh, the police were called and asked for assistance uh, by officials at the Navy Yard. We understand that an employee at the Navy Yard shortly after 729 reported that she may have heard gunshots in the facility. The police officials at the facility sent out the call to law enforcement in the area. Our police responded our police went into the facility with the assistance of our federal partners. At this time, there is no evidence of gunshots. There is no evidence of a shooter, uh, and there's no evidence of any victims today. We look forward to finding out um, that all of our partners responded as they should have. Uh, the chief of police will convene uh, a, a after action meeting uh, shortly after the incident is cleared uh, to see how everybody responded. I'm very proud of all of the officials that answered the call. Uh, we know that there have been a lot of lessons learned from previous incident fatality here at the Navy Yard. Um, and we have found that there has been a clear, coordinated and convincing response to this scene. Um, and we are grateful at this point um, that we have found no shooter evidence of shooting or any of victims. I want to turn it over now to the Admiral uh, so that the Admiral can describe how Navy officials responded uh, in the current uh, investigation in the center. Uh, and then we will hear from the Chief of po the Metropolitan Police Department, Kathy Lanier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm Vice Admiral Dixon Smith, Commander, Navy Installations Command, and first and foremost, I'd like to thank the Mayor, uh, DC Metro, uh, all of our uh, first responder responders from the federal uh, and metro area. Uh, their response was uh, outstanding this morning and very much appreciated. As the Mayor said, uh, we received a report of an active shooter this morning at 0729. Uh, we responded to that uh, and called in assistance from uh, Metro DC. Uh, as the mayor stated, uh, there has been no signs of a shooter, uh, no shootings, uh, and no injuries. Uh, Navy Yard remains in lockdown, and Building 197, we're finishing up uh, the final walkthrough right now, uh, checking and opening up all of our secured spaces. We expect that to be done within 20 minutes. Uh, assuming we find nothing, uh, then we will open up the Navy Yard again. Uh, for the folks that were evacuated out of 197, the Humphreys building, uh, based upon their location in the building, they either went outside of the Navy Yard or they went over to our conference center. Uh, and based upon the events of a couple of years ago, we have uh, counselors and our chaplains are with them now providing uh, the support uh, that they may need or desire. Uh, again, in closing, I'd like to thank the mayor uh, and the police chief and all the first responders for your quick response this morning. Uh, we've learned a lot over the last couple of years. We've exercised hard. We're going to review this again uh, to see what went right and what we can continue to improve upon uh, to improve our procedures in the future. Thank you very much. Chief. Uh, just to give you a quick rundown uh, from what we know right now. First, a call was placed from inside of the building, uh, NAVC command, this morning around 729. It went to the internal call center uh, inside of uh, the Navy Yard. That call once received for a possible sound of gunshots was then um, immediately taken by the Naval District of Washington Police and broadcast over Metropolitan Police Department's uh, citywide channel as a request for the Metropolitan Police and other law enforcement partners to assist with a potential active shooter uh, at NAVC Command uh, at the Washington Navy Yard. Our units, uh, along with Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan Police Department, along with the um, United States Park Police, uh, Metro Transit Police, uh, NCIS, United States Marshals, ATF, and others, uh, uh, Capitol Police, all responded to that request for uh, law enforcement assistance. Uh, many of the things we talked about in our after action of the Washington Navy Yard response uh, a couple years ago um, went very, very smoothly. So officers were immediately able to access the gates and get in. Uh, we were having uh, radio communications both into my command center 
and in the field uh, immediately from uh, Naval District of Washington police officers inside of NAVC Command's building. Um, within 20 minutes of the first call, uh, I was sitting in Unified Command with uh, Admiral Hilardi's um, police chiefs and uh, representatives from the FBI and CIS and other uh, federal law enforcement agencies. Um, in just about the same amount of time, uh, Metropolitan Police Department officers and FBI agents were able to get into and take control of the command booth um, and access uh, everything we needed in terms of cameras and uh, uh, stuff inside of the building. So uh, having spent a lot of time doing the after action from the first incident at the Navy Yard, uh, it appears that all the things that we tried to correct and make it go better from the last incident went very, very well. A very smoothly, uh, well-coordinated uh, response here and very happy that there is. Uh, this turns out to be a great exercise for us to see that we fix what we wanted to fix and nobody is hurt and no evidence of any uh, shots fired. So at this point, we'll take any questions that you have and we can answer. Chief, how does this increased concern about Independence Day, July 4th, so the, the question is, how do we feel this uh, impacts the uh, increased threat for the uh, Independence Day? Um, obviously, right now, all, all evidence is, is that uh, there was no criminal act here, there was no shots fired, that no one was hurt, and we don't believe that it was a uh, malicious uh, hoax or, or incident like that. So I don't think it has any uh, relative play on, on that, that threat level. Um, we take every event here in Washington very serious, and our posture remains extremely high for all special events, and it will continue for the fourth. Chief, Chief let me clarify. Chief, Looking back, you, I meant by my question, Chief. Construction here, is it possible that someone just heard construction noise? I mean, obviously, anything is possible, and, and you know, I think that we tell people over and over again: see something, say something. You don't know what's going on. Don't take things for granted. You know, make that call. So, regardless of what it is, an employee thought they heard something of concern. They made a call. That's what we tell people to do. Chief, Chief, Chief there was a report. The there was a report of a surveillance tape that showed two men climbing a fence just minutes before the reports of gunshot. Is there? Are you investigating that? Is that? A, is are, is there this surveillance video? I, I am aware of that. We have pulled all video. We are reviewing all video. We have no concerns about it right now. None. Admiral, can you talk? Admiral, can you talk about the uh, active shooter drill? Uh, what it is that you practice on a routine basis and, and how it works this time? Sure. We, uh, all of our commands practice active shooter drills. So we simulate that there's an active sh shooter uh, drill in the building uh, and we train with our employees on how to respond. Uh, the first thing is to get out. Uh, if you can't, then you barricade yourself and you have to, then you fight. But we go through that and we exercise that. Uh, and we do that on a routine basis so our employees know what to do. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that that made a difference this morning in the <laughs> actions that the employees in the NAV at NAVC did in the Humphreys building. And what else can you tell us about the person who called in the report about shots fired? And is there any concern that they did it on purpose? Is there any, is there any possibility that they have a connection to a character? We, we have interviewed the person. We have no concerns whatsoever. Again, I think this is an employee that did exactly what we ask employees to do. Uh, and the general public to do. If you have a concern, uh, something is not right, please call the police, let us figure it out. So where was she when she heard the sound? First with the assistance of federal? Uh, Naval District of Washington police were inside of the building when they made the call to us. So we followed them into the building, yes. Chief, where was she when she heard those sounds? That All I can tell you is that she was in an office uh, inside of NAVC Command's building. Chief, clarify my earlier question. Looking back at the size of this response, how many people, how quick? Was any of that colored by the announcement of increased concern about terrorism on Independence Day? I think the response we saw here today is exactly like the response that we saw here uh, when we had the active shooter here uh, in, the, in the last incident, is that we didn't take every call seriously. And when we heard a call go out for a potential active shooter, we brought the resources that needed to be here. And I, and I think uh, it has nothing to do with the increased threat level. That's what we do every day here. Chief, can Chief, you speak huh? to the larger uh, question about, about the July 4th weekend and your concerns about security threats in the nation's capital? So again, I, I think we operate here in Washington, D.C. Uh, that there's an elevated threat level at all times. Uh, we never lower our, our threat level in terms of our posture. And we're aware of what you know the you know the discussion and chatter is around the Fourth of July events and and all those threats, and we take those in, into account. We change our tactics up for different events, but we never lower our posture. We always 
uh, maintain a very high Are posture. More <laughs> we have a, a full deployment for every 4th of July. Chief, what would you say to, to people coming to D.C. that are worried, that are on edge, coming into the 4th of July, with events like this and, and previous events as well? What do you tell those people that are on edge? Well, I think this event shows that you have a city that's very well prepared. Uh, you have a city that is, uh, has a lot of uh, local, federal, law enforcement assets that are very well coordinated. We work together every day, and it's not only what you see, it's what you don't see. We do that behind the scenes as well. So I think people should feel very comfortable that this type of response does happen. Um, unfortunately, it happens when there is no uh, you know, loss of life or real incident. Could you talk to them? Could, could you? Here. Hold on, I'm going to get somebody okay. else in. Yes, sir. Chief, why are you convinced that this wasn't a hoax? Why are you persuaded that this was just a misunderstanding? Because we've spoken to the person who made the call. And what did she she how quickly was The it? person who made the call heard what she thought may have been gunshots, and she made a call, which is what employees here are trained to do. Um, we have no concerns that this was a hoax whatsoever. Just the, the one call? That was response, it? Yes. After the initial response, uh, some police ran to the Federal Can you please tell us what happened there? So what often happens with a response of this nature is there's a lot of police activity going on in the neighborhood and people's uh, sense of alertness is heightened and when they see different things going on they'll call which is again we ask people to call and so we started getting additional calls about people on roofs and, and a lot of what we were getting was people calling in what they saw as police response most of the officers that responded here today were in uniform some were not um, those officers that were not in uniform we did get additional calls about persons showing up that may uh, be suspicious, and they turned out to be law enforcement. Was that person who made the call? Was that person who made the call here on the base during the 2013 incident? So the the, the, the the question is, was the person who made the 911 call today a person who was here during the original Navy Yard incident? I I don't want to answer that question. I think respect for the privacy of the, the person that worked that boat. So, you know, information came in constantly as we were here. Once we started, you know, going through the building and interviewing employees, we took all the employees from the building to a separate location and began interviewing them. The more and more and more employees that we interviewed, um, the more comfortable we felt uh, that, that we were really going in and just to secure this building to make sure. We don't take anything for granted. Every inch of that building has been searched and is being searched the second time. So let, let, let me just say, and we want to thank everybody for, um, for for being here and taking this information. Um, I think what we see is, again, is that we had a clear, we had a convincing response to, to this scene. What we've also learned is that uh, things that we could have improved upon, that we learned over the last couple of years, we've done exactly that. I think the coordination between our police department and our federal partners uh, it has been so well executed um, in this event. And so when we talk to our residents and visitors who want to celebrate uh, Independence Day in the District of Columbia, it should be very clear to everybody that we take clear incredible threats or calls from our citizens and employees very, very seriously. It should also be clear that the law enforcement apparatus of this city, which is not only our 4,000 officers, but a significant number of federal partners, will respond accordingly. Um, so we're looking forward not only to the events on the National Mall celebrating the independence of our nation, um, but we will also stand up a significant number of events in our neighborhoods. So the 660,000 people of Washington are also going to be celebrating Independence Day in their neighborhoods. Thank you, everybody.